could replicate what happens with volcanoes using existing technologies relatively cheaply, relatively quickly, and would make a, a pretty immediate dent in one of the major challenges attached to climate change, which is global atmospheric temperature increase. Uh, so those are the upsides. You can see why these sorts of technologies are so enticing. You can see, given the political struggles that we're having coming to grips with climate change, why people might point to these sorts of options. But as with any complex conversation, there are downsides. Now, I take very seriously the admonition of, of physicist Freeman Dyson when it comes to talking about these sorts of concerns about big technologies, either to stand opposed or to push them forward, you are gambling with lives. This ultimately, again, is a question about people. The fear that um, it will take us away from the other forms of response that um, they would like to see happen. But the message has to be, it's too late. We're beyond that now with this conversation about these technologies. The climate geoengineering genie is far too enticing and far too powerful to be stuffed now back into its bottle. We don't have that option anymore. Ignoring this conversation won't make it go away. So what we need are for concerned citizens, all of us, and civil society organizations who represent some of our interests, to get more heavily involved in this conversation, to make sure that we move from, is this possible, to is this desirable? Today we have some weird clouds. They're not, we haven't seen them directly spraying overhead, but these clouds here have been drifting in from the coast. And you can see there's sort of this lininess to them. Uh, you can see the lininess to these clouds here as well, if you want to call them clouds. They are actually man made. <clears throat> solar radiation management haze with nanoparticulates of barium, aluminum, strontium, coal ash, sulfur, etc. And you can see some slight scalar action here, which means that basically they're manipulating this with microwave. Uh, they're manipulating it with microwave transmitters. And basically, they're sending a frequency up to the sprayed materials to either condense or disperse it according to uh, the way they want the weather. And if we look back over here, we can see particular lininess. And you'll notice that we have no wind at all. There's no wind in these trees. You can't see any wind blowing in these trees at all. And if we look up here, we see that these clouds are moving. They're actually moving uh, northwest. So they're moving northwest at this point. So it's very likely that the scalar uh, microwave transmitters are, are pushing this north northwest. And so we haven't seen a lot of spraying directly overhead over the city. Uh, I've seen some, but they're not directly over the city. And so that's what's going on. And so we have geoengineering, weather modification, artificial weather without informed consent, without public consent, without government, local government oversight. And so, yep, that's what's going on. What's the priorities here? I can get a seatbelt ticket and thrown in jail for not signing a ticket, getting pulled over for not having a seatbelt. And these guys can spread this crap in our air all day. So what's the priorities?
How long can you hold your breath? <clears throat> I mean, we got, you know, a lot of good things going on, but the thing is, is that the primary thing is our air. And when we got this kind of crap floating around in our air all day, you know, what kind of priorities, priorities are you going to set? You got another year left till you get your pension, and you probably won't even last that long because we got all this crap in the air. <clears throat> I've definitely noticed it in the last couple of years, and uh, it doesn't seem to be getting any better at this point.